Welcome to St. Joe's on this first Sunday of Lent. When I first began my ministry in the North, I had a parishioner who during struggling moments in his life would ask me to rebaptize him because he felt that if he had been baptized properly, he would not have to deal with temptation or sin. He believed that the Holy Spirit people receive when they refuse to let evil become the main force in their lives and open their hearts to Christ's saving grace, that they would no longer be tempted by the inclinations and desires that lead people down a different path that separates them from others and God. Sadly, even though he had been baptized in every church in town, he still felt his trouble to be faithful was due to the performance of the minister rather than acknowledging his own limitations and weaknesses. The message of the Lenten scripture calls us to accept who we are as we are, for it is in the midst of our limitations and weaknesses that God draws near to us. In the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, in the temptation in the desert, the devil calls Jesus Son of God, a title and a calling that was revealed to Jesus when he was baptized by John at the Jordan River. This unique experience drove him into the desert to pray and reflect how this divine gift would shape his identity as the Son of God and help him to accept the invitation to be the suffering servant of God. As Jesus prepares for his mission in this harsh, empty environment, he is confronted with the dif difficulty of letting God be the center of his life. It is during this struggle that the devil tempts Jesus to deny his humanity. If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. In the face of this temptation to deny his human limits, Jesus responds by rejecting the view that his being God's Son cancels out his humanity. Rather, he knows that human beings don't live on bread alone. A statement every reader of the Hebrew scriptures would complete by saying, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. When the devil t tempted Jesus by a suggesting that in exchange for worship, he would give him all the glory and power of the world, Jesus pointed out that it is written, worship and serve only God. In doing so, he rejected the view that his mission demanded political power. And when the devil placed Jesus on the pinnacle of the temple and invited him to throw himself off by suggesting that angels would protect him from harm because he was the Son of God, he rejected the view that divine sonship meant he deserved special protection, special care from God. Jesus refused to deny his human limitations. Rather, in refusing these temptations, Jesus is ultimately choosing to let God be the center of his life. In today's Gospel, Luke leads us with the assurance that this was only a skirmish in Jesus' protracted battle with evil. The devil left Jesus but would wait for another opportunity. Indeed, the tempter would return to lure Jesus away from his mission and weaken his resolve many times during his ministry. As Luke tells us, Jesus was able to survive each foray because, as was his custom, he often withdrew for a while to find God in prayer. Through those moments of encounter with God, he was strengthened and was being prepared for the ultimate conflict with evil on the cross. What about us? How will our identity as daughters and sons of God help us to choose our gifts 
to use our gifts and talents to build a new world order based on justice, mercy, and compassion? And how will our limitations and weaknesses help us to let God be the center of our lives? Lent is a time during which all of us are called to take inventory. Lent calls all of us to take the time and energy to see our limitations and weaknesses, to list them out, and to discern in them a call to draw nearer to God. Lent calls us not to deny our limitations and weaknesses or hide from them. Rather, Lent calls us to accept our limitations and weaknesses and learn how, with God's grace, to transform them for the good of others. As for Jesus and my friend who demanded to be baptized over and over again, so for us. The greatest temptation in life is to deny our limitations and weaknesses. As we enter this Lenten season by fasting so as to make room for God and others in our lives, by praying so as to put on the mind and heart of Jesus, and by giving alms so as to allow the needs and concerns of the poor to shape our sense of discipleship. May we accept our limitation and weaknesses in ways that allow God to be the center of our lives. May these penitential actions help us to live more fully the suffering, death, and resurrection rhythm of our baptism. And may the grace of this Lenten season find us once more being overwhelmed by a gracious and merciful God abounding in steadfast love. Take care. <laughs>